Welcome back to Crypto Eddie. In this video, guys, I'm going to cover the top 10 layer ones. And the reason I'm making this video is because many of the layer ones that you might have thought were getting quite expensive in, say, March, April, they've now retraced <laughs> and you can pick them up at bear run prices, prices that you didn't see since last December. So that's what I'm going to feature in this video. You might want to consider picking up some of these layer ones. So if that sounds good to you, give me a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and ping that notification bell so that you don't miss my upcoming videos. In my next video, I'll be doing another 10 layer ones. So the next 10 will be layer ones with lower market caps. So having more upside potential. So good idea to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. Also, if you want to, if you like getting into projects really early, projects with tiny micro caps, then that's what we look for in my VIP Telegram group. So you can join that VIP Telegram group. There's details at the top of the description below. And let's kick off with Ethereum. So Ethereum, I consider to be very low risk, okay? It's the biggest layer one at 411 billion market cap. It went to about 600, 650 billion in the last bull run, but we're expecting it to go a little bit higher this time. Ethereum is the original decentralized platform. It was originally proof of, uh, proof of work. Now it's changed to proof of stake and it enables the creation of smart contracts. It was the first blockchain to do this and it was highly decentralized when it was first released. Since it's gone over to proof of stake, things have changed a little bit because whoever owns the most Ethereum can obviously control the network. Now, Ethereum was responsible for first introducing smart contracts. These are self-executing contracts where the terms are directly written into the code. So two things there, they execute automatically once the terms are met and the terms themselves are immutable means that they can't be changed. Okay, so Ethereum is the number one global compute computing blockchain and it's had very little downtime and fraud since it was first released in 2005 under the creation of Vitalik Buterin. Okay, in this video, I'll be explaining positives and negatives of layer ones, also the dilution and the market. So the positives for Ethereum are first of all that it's had the approval of its spot ETF, so we can expect a lot of institutional FOMO. That's why we might see a much higher market cap for Ethereum in this bull run compared to the last. So I'm guessing, and we're all guessing with this because no one really knows what market cap any project is going to go to. But with the institutional FOMO, I think that from now, and now we've got something like, I think it's around about... Um, 400 billion now. So I think we can do a three to a six X. Okay. So we're looking at something like 1.2 billion. Uh, sorry, we're looking at 1.2 trillion to possibly 2.3, 2.4 trillion total for Ethereum. That's a huge market cap. Okay. So some of the positives apart from the ETF approval is the fact that it is the number one blockchain and it's the number one blockchain that has the most developers on it. So it's got the more computer scientists developing projects on Ethereum than any other blockchain. So it's still going to be around for quite a while, even though it has lots of negatives, which are high gas fees, slow transaction speeds, congested network, and probably lower multiples than other layer ones. Now, the dilution is a strange one with Ethereum because it's a bit paradoxical. It's got an infinite supply, but the Ethereum Improvement Protocol 1559 means that Ethereum is burned every time you do a transaction. And even though they're releasing more Ethereum every day, it's actually burning more than they're actually releasing. So it is actually deflationary, although that could change because there's nothing to stop Ethereum actually releasing more tokens than it is currently. The markets that it's available on are fantastic. They're all tier one central exchanges, for example, Binance, Coinbase, Kraken, OKX. It's available on pretty much every decentralized and centralized exchange because it is the number one blockchain for layer ones. Okay, so 
Moving, moving on, let, let's just have a look at the price action of Ethereum. Right, so if we look at the price of Ethereum now, we can see that it's trading at uh, $3,386. It was actually $4,000. We've not had that many pullbacks from Ethereum since it started um, go, going up in value since October. So in October, it was about $1,500 and it rose up quite sharply then and quite quickly to $4,000 by March the 12th. We did have a retracement. It came down to $2,900 May the 13th. And since then, it's retraced back down from $3,800 and back down to $3,400, just under $3,400. So if you want to buy some Ethereum and have a strong portfolio with Bitcoin and Ethereum, as an anchor, then maybe this is a good time because the price of Ethereum could keep going up now due to the approval of the spot ETF. So if you want to buy Ethereum, possibly this is a good time. It's not my favorite token. I think it's only got a 3x to a 6x X in it. Having said that, it's very safe. You can probably get something between maybe eight to nine to ten thousand dollars, maybe um, at the upper range, possibly twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Next up, I'm going to talk about Solana, also quite a low risk crypto. It's 57 billion market cap. And Solana, as you can see here in the description, focuses on high performance and low cost. It uses a novel consensus mechanism called proof of history to timestamp transactions, which combined with proof of stake, because you can stake Solana, this allows the network to process thousands of transactions per second. This makes Solana particularly suitable for DeFi and scalable applications that require high transaction speeds. Also, it has very low fees as well. So you can see here the positives of Solana are the high adoption, fast transactions and low fees. The negatives, however, are that Solana can be quite unreliable. It's had many outages and when the volume gets very high, it's susceptible to outages. Also, another negative or a possible drawback is the fact that it has quite a high market cap at the moment. Bearing in mind that Ethereum only went to about 600, 650 billion in the last bull run, you have to question whether or not Solana with these outages, which could affect adoption, whether it can actually reach what Ethereum got to in the last bull run. Don't forget, it's going to have a lot of competition from other layer ones and also from Ethereum itself. The dilution is about 79%, so I don't expect you to have too much dilution um, during this bull run for Solana. Okay, And it is available on all the tier one markets, so Binance, Coinbase, Kraken, OKX. I think you can get something like a 7 to 8x out of Solana, so at the moment, it's just under 60 billion. A 7x would take to about 420 or 450 billion with a bit of dilution. And I think that Solana is a really great project. Possibly it might retrace a bit more from where it is now. So just that, let's just have a look at the chart. So I've got this on the yearly chart. You can see that September 2023, you could have picked this up for just under $20. It's now $137. And it did rise up quite sharply, the same as Ethereum did, and it's retraced. But the retracement of Ethereum has been much less than Solana. So you can see that Ethereum is a much more solid coin in terms of upside and holding its upside, whereas Solana can have quite large pullbacks. And I imagine that if we have those outages again, then I think we'll have some quite steep pullbacks on Solana. Whether it'll pull back any more now is debatable. Okay, so at $137, maybe it's a good buy because it was $200 on April the 1st. Now you can see that if you if you go from, you know, August to August 2023 to now, it's quite a good steady climb that it's had to get to the, the current market cap of 63 billion. Okay, so if you want to buy Solana, maybe start DCAing in now. Personally, um, even though I hold some Solana, it's not a great deal. I'm not that bullish on Solana, but between Ethereum and Solana, I think that they're probably going to be about even Steven in this bull run. 
because the spot ETFs that have been now approved for Ethereum, I ex expect to give Ethereum the edge over Solana. Next up, Cardano. So Cardano, I also consider to be a very low risk blockchain, currently sitting at a 13 billion market cap. And it's described as a secure and scalable platform for smart contracts and decentralized applications. So following the footsteps of both Polkadot and Ethereum, this uses a proof of stake protocol called Ouroboros. Cardano emphasizes peer reviewed research and evidence based development, aiming for a sustainable ecosystem that is secure, scalable and interoperable. Now, there are some positives to Cardano, so it has very strong security. This is due to its complex code and it's considered to be more decentralized than Ethereum and Polkadot. Also, it has strong marketing. It's talisman Charles Hoskinson, the CEO, is always going online and giving speeches about how great Cardano is. However, let's look at the, some of the negatives. So it's got very slow development, so it's been very slow to develop its roadmap. Also, it's got very complex code. Now, I've just said that that's a positive for security, but it's also a negative because the complex code has caused problems for developers who can't really get to grips with it. Some people even say that Cardano has got outdated technology. Certainly, the promises made by Charles Hoskinson in terms of his vision for the future of Cardano haven't actually been met in terms of delivery. So he tends to over exaggerate the potential of Cardano. Okay, and I've also noted some corruption and some rugs on the Cardano network. So one rug that happened was this decentralized exchange ADAX where the team just abandoned the project. They cleaned out all the investors money. They didn't announce to anybody that they were going to stop developing the project. They couldn't finish the project and they blamed it on the difficult code that Cardano has. Now, another situation that arose was the card starter Sunday swap fiasco. Now, what happened basically was card starter said that they were making a decentralized exchange called card swap. They encouraged people on the card starter platform to stake their Ethereum and their card starter tokens. Card starter went up to about $80 and then it crashed down to about a tenth of that because the card starter team seemed to be dropping all their free tokens. So they cleaned out a lot of money from their own community by dropping their free tokens. Then they abandoned the card swap decks that they were supposed to be making and declared that Sunday Swap were going to be developing the decks for them. And that investors shouldn't worry because Sunday Swap tokens would be awarded to the card swap uh, liquidity farmers, people farming the actual card swap token. And they then signed a confidentiality, confide, confidentiality agreement, a non-disclosure agreement with Sunday Swap. And when it came out in the wash, how many Sunday Swap tokens that the liquidity pool contributors were going to get, in fact, it turned out that they didn't want to give any Sunday Swap tokens, and that they were they were offering them card starter tokens, which they'd already staked and lost about 10 times the value on. Most people also lost most of their Ethereum. At the end of the day, CardSwap sued Sunday Swap, and they tried to say that it was a misunderstanding in the end. I don't believe it. I think this was a conspiracy to defraud. I think all the investors were defrauded by the teams of Cardstarter and Sunday Swap who were still operating. Never ever deal with Sunday Swap or Cardstarter because these companies, these Projects, I think, are run by total criminals. That's my opinion. And they ripped off all their investors. So obviously there's some corruption and rugs in the Cardano ecosystem that people still remember. And I wouldn't bother. I would never buy Cardano in the future or any Cardano projects. I do hold a few Cardano projects. So I expect it to have decent performance in this bull run but I'll be just getting out of whatever kind of the Cardano projects that I've got now. I expect them to do quite well because they're very low at the moment, but I wouldn't invest in anything under the name Cardano in the future. And I've noticed a lot of big YouTubers saying the same thing like,
crypto banter as well. Okay, the dilution on Cardano, 79%. They're on the top markets. Kraken, Binance, Coinbase, OKX. I don't expect more than a 5x of Cardano going forward because I just don't think people believe in this project anymore. It's been too slow, too clunky, and doesn't deliver what it promises. Okay, let's just have a quick look at the performance of Cardano. So what you might notice about the Cardano price action is that even though it had quite a good run up from October from 24 cents, you could have got it at 24 cents. It's only 39 cents now. So if you go back, you can actually get Cardano now at about the same price it was on December the 4th, 2023. So that's over six, that's nearly seven months ago. It's over, yeah, it's nearly seven months ago. So this is a massive retracement that Cardano's had from about 77 cents on March the 12th. So what we're seeing is as you go down in market cap, the pullbacks are even bigger. Now, I'm not sure that you'll get Cardano this cheap ever again. When I saw it down here at 24 cents, I was tempted to buy some because I thought, well, Cardano at 24 cents, it can easily get up to a dollar and I can do a 4x. I wouldn't hold it for the entire bull run, but I think that when Cardano crashes like it just has done, it's a good token to get into just to get a two or three X and then get out. Okay, so, you know, buy it low, sell it when it's gone up and do about three or four X because sometimes it does rise up very quickly. Okay, so 13 billion market cap now. What do I see, see it going to in the future? Well, at the moment we've got about 13 million. So five times 13 is what, 26, 52, 62, about 65 billion. I think it could go somewhere between 65 and 75 billion. You might get a six or seven X off it, but I don't think you'll get more than that, guys. Okay, next up is AVAX. And AVAX is a blockchain layer one that I really like. It's very low risk. It's 10 billion market cap. I think it's got the edge on Cardano, okay? So it's designed to be a highly scalable, efficient blockchain, supporting the creation of decentralized applications and custom blockchain networks. It uses a unique consensus mechanism that enables high throughput and low latency, making it suitable for financial markets and enterprise use cases. So that's the description. It was created in September 2020, and it's been quite a reliable and successful blockchain since it was released. Positives are that it's highly scalable, decentralized, interoperable, and it also has fast transaction speeds and low costs. The negatives are that there's competition from other scalable networks. And also, strangely, AVAX has no penalty for malicious validators. The dilution is almost complete. So you've got eight to 9% dilution. It's available on all the tier one markets, the Binance, Coinbase, Kraken, OKX. For me, it's about a 10 to 15X. So I think that AVAX can easily get to 100 billion. Okay, let's have a look at the price action lately. Okay, so as you can see, we're seeing a similar pattern to Cardano here, but I think possibly not as bad as Cardano for the pullbacks, but the latest pullback is quite heavy. Okay, so again, you could have picked it up for about $10 in October, and it's now it now went up to $60 on March the 19th. It's pulled back over 50%. It's now $24.00. $25.32. Now, the reason for some of this is because it's just had a very big token release, which now that it's over, you you can actually get AVAX at a very cheap price. So you're getting it at the same price as you could have got it on about December the 6th or December the 8th. So again, we're going back nearly seven months here on the price that you can get as an entry for AVAX. So I think that's excellent. I don't think you'll be able to pick it up at much cheaper price than this. Possibly it will retrace a bit more because there is some news coming out from the Fed. And if that news is negative about interest rates, then possibly we'll see a further pullback in the crypto market and we'll see a bit, a bit more blood in the streets. OK, so for me, AVAX is about a 10x. I think it can go to about 250 to 300 dollars from here, possibly even more. So for me, AVAX is a really great buy now if you want a solid layer one. 
Okay, moving on to my fifth layer one. This is Polkadot. Also, I consider this low risk at 7.7 .7 billion market cap, and I think it has a potential for about a 5x upside, which might not sound very good, but I'll explain why that is in a moment. So Polkadot is a layer one blockchain that facilitates interoperability between different blockchains. So helping blockchains to actually communicate with each other, okay, and share information. It uses a multi-chain framework where the central relay chain connects connects to various parachains. These are actually parallel blockchains and they're almost copies of Polkadot itself. This implementation aims to enhance the security, scalability and innovation across blockchain networks. Now, the positives are that it's highly scalable, it's interoperable, it has good security and it has strong developer community. The negatives, however, is that it has strong competition from Sol and AVAX and I don't think it will get as big market caps as Solana and AVAX. Also, one of the negatives is the parachains themselves because people who are holding Polkadot from the last bull run, they may switch their allocation from Polkadot into one of the parachains like Moonbeam or Moon River or Akala because those parachains are much lower market caps and it's possible that those parachains will outperform Polkadot itself. Now, another negative of the Polkadot ecosystem is the founder Gavin Wood because of his personal behavior with underaged people, with, un with children. Okay, so he's got a bit of a reputation for, you know, having an eye for kids. According to some of the news that's come out on the internet, he actually wrote a blog himself saying that, um, so he had some fantasy about having sex with a girl who was about 12 or 13 years old or maybe younger, and she actually had HIV. So uh, very disturbing stories that have been coming out about Gavin Wood and about his, uh, his I don't know, his weird um, taste for children, sec his sexual taste for children, um, allegedly. Okay, so if you follow BitBoy Crypto, Ben Armstrong, he says a lot more about this and he goes into some details. He even says that he's got evidence that he can prove that Gavin Wood has actually tried to procure children in Southeast Asia. So obviously that is going to turn off quite a lot of people. Some people I know have actually just sold any projects they've got in Polkadot because of Gavin Wood's behavior or alleged behavior. Okay, the dilution is 94%. So you're not going to have any dilution on this project. I think this is the most negative point about Polkadot. I think that could lose them a lot of um, market cap in the future. It is, though, on the top markets of Binance, Kraken, Coinbase and OKX and all the other smaller central exchanges. But I think it's only a 5x from here. I think that Polkadot, in the last bull run, it went to about 55 billion. I can't see it getting much over 40 billion in this particular bull run. Now, if we look at the price action of Polkadot over the last year, we can see again that the best time to buy it was about October, when you could, when you could have got it for about $3.60. And it's only $5.89 now. It was actually as high as nearly $12. Okay, so it's retraced by about 55, nearly 60%. And the price that you're getting it for now goes back to about, again, December the 4th. So it's a really good buy now. If you like Polkadot personally, I don't. And the Gavin Wood story puts me off even more. OK, by contrast, the sixth layer one that I'm going to feature in this video is the Near Protocol. This is, in my opinion, very low risk. It's only 5.8 billion market cap right now. And Near is a decentralized application blockchain that aims to make it e easier for developers to build on and use dApps. So it's kind of like the opposite of Cardano. Cardano's got very complex code, whereas Near Protocol has got much, a much simpler code. And it also using, uses sharding, which breaks up the blockchain into smaller, more manageable pieces, allowing for increased transaction output and scalability. Near focuses on usability and developer friendliness. It was also first launched as an AI blockchain. So they're actually quite strong on artificial intelligence. 
I expect that this will be a big positive for Near Protocol going through this bull run because obviously artificial intelligence AI is one of the biggest narratives and expected to attract quite a big chunk of the overall market cap of blockchain. Also, other po positives that we can point to are low transaction fees, strong interoperability, and or, as I've mentioned, it's developer friendly. The negatives, I don't really think these are negatives. Okay, so the only negatives that I can think of listing are that it's a newer, smaller blockchain or smaller ecosystem and therefore more risky. But if you look at the flip side of that, you could say, well, new blockchains have got more opportunity for upside because they're new and near protocol has got a lot of financial backers. So it doesn't really have many negatives. Obviously, it's got competition from other blockchains, but I think the competition from NEAR is something that other blockchains have to be worried about, not NEAR protocol worrying about competition from other layer ones. The dilution also is 92%, so you're not gonna lose much on this project to dilution. The markets where you can buy NEAR are also tier one and all tier two platforms. So it's available on Binance, OKX, Kraken, and Coinbase. Now I'm saying a 10X for near protocol, but I think it could even do a 15 to 20X because at the moment it's under 6 billion market cap and a 10X would take it to 60 billion, maybe 120 billion to a 20X. I think that's possible because in the last bull run, we saw Cardano go to 93, 94 billion and it didn't even have smart contracts and it didn't have any AI function. So near for me, could be the clear winner in this bull run. But there are a few more that we have to look at. First, let's look at the price action of NIA. So over the last year, you can see again, the best time to buy this token was in October, 2023, when you could have got it for about, what's it there? About 99, 98 cents, around a dollar, okay? I bought it a little bit earlier, so I'm a little bit peeved that I paid an extra 50 cents, you know, I could have got it for a dollar if I'd have come later to the party. Okay, I got it in July for about $1.50. Could have got it in October, look, for about a about dollar there. And so I paid one fifty for it. Okay, since then it's had a good run up. I've just held it and held it. And it did actually go up here to about $8.82. It's now had a big retracement to $5.52. Now, I don't consider that as big a drawback, sorry, pullback, as other layer ones that I've just mentioned have had. So I see NEAR continuing to perform well in this bull run. And we can see that a fully diluted valuation of 6.5 billion, okay, it looks like NEAR can at least do a 10X, maybe a 15 to 20X going forward. Okay, the seventh layer one that I want to talk about is ICP or Internet Computer Protocol. So ICP, Internet Computer Protocol, is currently sitting at a 3.6 billion market cap. Now, I'm saying that this is medium risk, but I would say low to medium risk, okay? Now, what does it do? Well, the Internet Computer aims to extend the functionality of the public internet to host backend software, transforming it into a global computer platform. It allows developers to deploy secure, tamper-proof applications directly on the web without relying on traditional centralized IT infrastructure. So with Internet Computer, you can do everything on chain. The other positives are that it's got the most amazing team. So I've looked at the team and I think it's probably the best team in the whole of blockchain. It also probably has the best technology in blockchain. So you might be asking, why is it only 3.6 billion market cap? Uh, yes, uh, I would ask the same question. It's also infinitely scalable. It has fun tra fast transaction speeds and it's fully decentralized. Sounds like a dream, doesn't it? Now, what are the negatives then? Well, the negative is that it's lagging in adoption. Now, I think this is because there's something about ICP that Wall Street doesn't like. Now, if you cast your mind back to when ICP launched, it was attacked by FTX, Sam Bankman frieds company. They bought up a lot of internet computer on the launch and then dumped it, crashing the price. I think it actually launched and it went up to about $700 and then it came down to, you know, something like $20 or something. 
And the, uh, the cheapest you could have got internet computer was about $3 about, about a year ago, okay? So why is it lagging in adoption? Well, maybe Wall Street and institutional financial organizations in the United States, they see it as something that they can't manipulate as easy as Solana and Ethereum. So that's why they're a little bit shy to embrace ICP. The dilution on it is 89% now. So you're not going to get much dilution from ICP if you buy it for this bull run. And it is available on all the tier one central exchanges, Binance, Kraken, Coinbase, OKX. I'm predicting a 15 to 20x for internet computer. A 20x would only take it to about 72, 73 billion. That's less than Cardano had in the last bull run. And it's far superior in terms of the team and the technology and what it's trying to achieve. Let's just have a look at the a price action of ICP over the last year. So as you can see, you could have bought ICP for about just under $3 on October the 11th, 2023. And since then, it's, it just kept going up in value. You had a few pullbacks, but nothing serious. And it actually hit 19, over $19 on March the 27th. And since then, it's pulled back to $8.30, which is the price today. So that's more than a, that's about a 60% pullback. This is more about market conditions. Only Solana and Ethereum have showed resilience and held their market caps closer to the all time high this year. But Internet Computer, like other cryptos, has taken quite a hit on the current pullback. So $8.30 now. The last time you could have got it for this price was about December the 16th or December the 17th, okay? You can see there, December the 16th, it was 721. And by the 18th, it was $10.57. So it is quite volatile. You can see quite a lot of peaks and troughs here. And you can expect with internet computer that this will continue, but I expect it to go up quite steadily in value. I can't see it staying under 20 billion market cap for very long. So. I think a five to seven X for internet computer in the next three to five months is, is definitely on the cards. And it's, it's one of these cryptos that I've definitely um, invested in. So internet computer, I have high hopes for in this bull run. Okay, so if you haven't got any internet computer at the moment, maybe you should consider buying into this project because it's a project that could take over the whole of blockchain. It's so complete. There are, I don't think any projects are, that are so complete as internet computer. My eighth layer one I'm considering today is Casper at 3.5 billion market cap, slightly lower market cap than ICP. And Casper aims to be a fast, scalable proof of work blockchain. Okay, they claim that they've actually solved the block, blockchain trilemma. So the trilemma is that it's difficult to get a blockchain that is decentralized, that's very fast, and also very secure. But Casper claim that they've actually solved this problem. Okay, so it uses something called the Ghost DAG protocol, which allows multiple blocks to be created and confirmed simultaneously. So instead of having linear blocks, it has many blocks that are being actually confirmed at the same time. This approach actually enhances the transaction throughput while maintaining security and decentralization. Let's look at the positives and the negatives of Casper. So the positives are fast transactions, good scalability, strong security and decentralization. The negatives, however, is that it is quite a new crypto. It's very risky. Now you might say, oh, but you said before, new cryptos like Near Protocol, because they're new, they're not riskier. They've got more upside potential. Yeah, but the thing is about Casper is that its upside up to now actually started in the bear run and it was mostly driven by hype because they claimed that they'd solved the blockchain trilemma and that they were proof of work and that they were a similar model to Bitcoin. So there was some good, good noises that Casper made, which made a lot of retail FOMO into it. Now, you've got to remember that Casper is not actually a blockchain. It's actually just a ledger and they don't have smart contracts yet. Um, apart from the, the hype, which I think will die down soon, 
Casper also is not available on tier one uh, markets. So it's only available on Mexi, Gate.io, BitGet and Qcoin. Okay, so there's no OKX, there's no Kraken, there's no Coinbase, there's no Binance. Now, this is a major Achilles heel for Casper. Without those markets, I don't think it can do more than, say, a 6 to an 8x. So at the moment, I would put Casper at something like maybe 25 to 28 billion market cap. Okay, it's fully diluted, so there aren't any tokens that will dilute your uh, potential investment. Okay, but because it doesn't have s smart contracts, you could say, well, Casper is just another Kadena without smart contracts. So Kadena is also proof of work, also claimed um, two years ago to have solved the blockchain trilemma. And it does have smart contracts and it does have a full ecosystem. So for me, Kadena is better technology than Casper and it has a big ecosystem. It's got smart contracts. So why Casper is sitting at a 3.5 billion market cap is a little bit confusing to me. That's why I only put it at about a 6 to 8x. Okay. If it, however, gets onto Coinbase and Binance and OKX and Kraken, uh, then I could see it doing maybe a 20x because those markets will just ca catapult its significance even higher. So if we look at the price of Casper and how it's developed in terms of market cap over the last year, we can see that if you go back to July 2023, you could have got this token at two cents. It's now 15 cents. So from a year ago, it's done about an 8x, okay? And it's not really pulling back that much. So every time it gets a peak, okay, it gets a bit of a pullback, but you can see here, it went to 14 cents, pulled back to about 10. Here, it went to 18 cents, pulled back to 11. So when you get those peaks, guys, don't forget, take profits, okay? And then buy it back when it dips, if you can judge it. <laughs> Not an easy uh, feat. Okay, so Casper, if it can get on tier one exchanges, possibly it could do a 15 to 20 X, but without getting on those tier one exchanges, I think that Casper is about maybe a eight, maybe 10 X at the most. Okay, the penultimate layer one that I'm going to feature today. Okay, so number nine is Aptos at 2.9 billion market cap. Aptos focuses on providing a safe and scalable infrastructure for decentralized applications. It uses something called the Byzantine Fault Tolerance for Consensus, which ensures reliable operation, even if some network nodes fail or act maliciously. So that's quite a, a good, a good built-in protection for the actual blockchain. Aptos aims to enhance the performance and security of decentralized systems, and it's apparently very popular with gaming projects. So that could be a pos positive going forward towards the end of the bull run if gaming explodes at that time. Okay, other positives are low transaction fees, good security, it's developer friendly, and it has strong backing from venture capitalists. Okay, now this could be a negative though. So negatives are it's got a lot of competition from other L1s. Um, will it get the adoption that it needs to get to a very high market cap? I'm not sure. Also, there's a problem with the token distribution because 49% of the tokens were given at a very, very low price to developers and big VCs. So probably they haven't got all the tokens yet, but when they do, they'll be dropping them on retail and we'll see huge pullbacks. And I think retail just won't do well out of this blockchain going forward. Okay, the dilution also at the moment is only 41%. So you're probably going to get quite a lot of dilution from this project. And also those tokens that have been given to venture capitalists and developers, I think when those are free for them to sell them, you're going to see some massive pullbacks on Aptos. Okay, let's just have a look at the chart. So as I've just said, I expect there to be big pullbacks on Aptos. And we're looking at the one year chart here. Now we can see that in July 2023, the price was actually higher than it is now. So a year ago, if you'd have bought this project, you would actually be down on your money now. And by 
October, it, it had even gone down even more. So it was then $4.83. So July, August, September, October. We're looking at nearly four months here. And the token has lost about $3 on its value. So not good if you're a retail investor. Probably the reason for this is the VCs and also developers dropping their tokens. We can see then that it had another run up. And obviously you can see there by March 27th, 2024, the price went to $18.14. Now the price is down at $6.99 and it could go down even lower if there's bad news from the Fed. Now this is almost about, this is about 63% pullback. Now that's terrible for a, a, a layer one going, just going into now the bull run. It's probably the worst performance of all the layer ones that I've mentioned in this particular video. Okay, so for me, Aptos is one to avoid, especially because the dilution is so bad because the, there's, there's a concentration of tokens with VCs and developers. I don't think retail will benefit much from this particular token. In my opinion, you should stay clear of this one, guys. Right, so that brings me to my last project, which is Hedera Hashgraph, which is the 10th layer one that I'm featuring today at 2.6 billion market cap. Before I t tell you all about Hedera and look at the chart, I'd just like to ask you to please to spare a moment and give me a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and ping the bell for all notifications because then you'll be able to get notified of videos that I'm uploading. My next video will actually be about the next 10 layer ones that are good to buy now, okay? And these will be layer ones that have got lower market caps and therefore layer ones that could give you more upside than the layer ones that I'm mentioning today, okay? Not all of them, not necessarily. Okay, so Hedera, uh, uses an algorithm called the hash graph, and this is desi designed to offer fast, secure, and fair transactions. Okay, I've not heard that before, have you? It ensures high throughput and low latency. So, you know, um, it, 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 it means that transactions don't fail very often, making header suitable for applications across finance, supply chain, and other applications. Header aims to provide a more efficient and secure alternative to traditional blockchain technology. But there are concerns about the governing council members. These include Google, IBM, and Boeing. And these entities may exercise too much control for their own advantage. And even though there are 39 council members, these represent the interests of large corporations. But in my opinion, as long as retail can buy HBAR at a low price and sell it at a high price, and exercise self-custody, I don't see a problem. Okay, so the positives of Hedra are high, high speed transactions and low costs, and also huge partnerships. So Hedra has some of the best partnerships in crypto. So this is definitely a project that I'm happy that I've invested in, okay? The negatives are about the ownership. Well, as I just mentioned, I don't really see that as a problem and also, control issues. Again, I don't see that as a problem. As long as you can buy the token low and you can sell it high, I don't see a problem at all. The dilution at the moment is 72%. You won't get that much dilution on this project in this bull run, but more than many of the other layer ones that I've mentioned so far. The markets where you can buy Hedera at the moment are Coinbase, Binance, and OKX. So they are on three of those top tier one central exchanges and also available on most secondary exchanges. I think Hedra is a solid 10x from here. Um, I see it going to at least 26 billion. It could even be a 20x. I don't see why Hedra can't go to about 50 or 60 billion. Okay, if we look at the annual price action of Hedra, we can see that back in July, it was around 5 cents. Now it's around 7 cents. So if you draw a line from where, where it is now at seven cents, okay, you could have got it around the same price on April the 18th. There was a, a dip there, then it went up really sharp. 
and you could have bought it also early February for about seven cents as well. So there have been a few pullbacks around seven cents, but not not really significant. Here you had this pullback and then it went straight back up. The same happened in April. So really, you know, the time when this was actually seven cents when it started going up was actually back in December. But there have been two opportunities to actually get Hedra at about seven to eight cents since then. OK, you'll notice that the price action is quite steady in terms of upside. So even though we've had these peaks and these occasional troughs, the price action seems to be on the upside. And it looks like Hedra will have a good bull run because the fully diluted valuation of three point, just under four billion. OK, so a 10x. 40 billion if it was fully diluted it won't be fully diluted so you could maybe say 3.5 billion by the end of the bull run when you might want to take your tokens out and i think that this can get to more than 35 billion i think this could easily get to 50 to 70 billion so for me hbar could do a 20x okay guys that's all i've got for you in this video if you've got some value from it, don't forget to give me a like, subscribe to the channel, ping the bell for all notifications because I will be making a second video on my second top 10 layer ones, which will be lower market cap and therefore have potential for more upside X potential. OK, and if you want to, you can join my VIP Telegram chat. We have a really vibrant, supportive community. And every week I drop a small cap or micro gem that could possibly 100 or even 1000 X. So if you want to get into a supportive VIP Telegram chat, you can join details at the top of the description below. It's only $60 a month. And if you pay by crypto, it's only $399 for a year. That's actually about $30, $33 a month. So it's quite unbeatable value. And most guys are making back an annual subscription just off one uh, call in my chat, which comes at least once a week. OK, right, guys, time for me to have a cup of tea. <sighs> Lovely jubbly. <laughs> right, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Take care of yourselves wherever you are. Until my next video. Cheers.